I do that. Okay, this is so awkward. And I don't even know if it's working, but I'm gonna film it anyway. <laughs> okay, hi guys. So I'm gonna jump right into the tutorial for this cute little cutout sweater pattern that I made, but I just wanted to give a few disclaimers and I'm outside and it's so windy and I feel awkward, so bear with me. Um, disclaimer number one is that this tutorial is not like, I go through the steps of the pattern, but I'm not gonna show you me chaining 36 chains or whatever I need because that just doesn't make any sense. Um, so it's definitely like a pause where you need, rewind where you need video. I just wanted to put that out there. I do give step by step every single thing that needs to get done. I'm just, don't show me doing the whole thing, if that makes any sense. Um, and then disclaimer number two is that I'm not a professional. Um, and this, this is the way I made this pattern like four different times. And this is definitely the way that I finally figured out how to keep the shape of the heart as well as I possibly could. So if you're super experienced, I'm going to cough. It is dry. Okay. If you're super experienced, you might be like, oh my God, there's such a more efficient way to do this. Then do it that way. Don't watch this video. This is just, I have made this like sample pattern a hundred times and I finally figured out that this is like the most foolproof way that I found to get it to look exactly how I want. And then the third disclaimer, <laughs> and hopefully by now you're not totally set off by watching the video, but my third disclaimer is that this is unlike anything else I've ever made before is definitely a trust the process um, pattern because you are working with negative space. So while you're making it, you might have moments where you're like, wait, this is folding weird or it's caving weird. Like guys were working with yarn. So <laughs> um, just trust the process. I promise it'll come out exactly how I'm telling you it'll come out. Okay, just trust me. Um, oh my God, and I forgot to introduce myself. If you're new here, my name is Emily and I make things and we make things. That's why you're here, I hope. Um, and if you wanna keep making things with me, subscribe to my channel. And I also wanna say thank you so much to 62 people who have subscribed to my channel because I haven't been doing this too long and I started this channel because I have no friends who like doing what I do and I had to talk about it with somebody and I thought maybe at least two people would be able to talk about it with me and to have 62 people who love the hobbies that I love is like, I don't know, it just feels really, really good and validating and fun. Like, let's talk, leave a comment, let's, let's crochet. Um, I think next week's video will be a sewing video though because my my pretty little fingers <laughs> are in pain because um, I've been crocheting a lot lately. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you do, subscribe. If you don't, subscribe anyway. Maybe you like the next one. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Let's make a heart cutout shirt. They're cute, they're fun, they're trendy. Okay, bye guys. Okay, so these are the yarns that I chose to use. I went with the both line brand uh, yarns, Pound of Love and Heartland. The Pound of Love is for the majority of the top. It's literally 1,020 yarns, um, which I needed every single bit of it for me. And then the purple is for all the detailing. I'm gonna jump right in showing how to make the heart. So I am gonna make it in like the standard size and then I'll show you at the end how you can make it bigger or smaller just by doing a little bit of easy math and I'm doing it on a lighter color because it's just so much easier to see than the dark purple and all you have to do is start out with a slip knot and then you're gonna chain 36 chains 36 stitches <laughs> Okay, so after you have chained 36, you want to just form a circle with the chain by putting a slip knot between the very first stitch and the very last stitch. At this point, you want to just be careful to make sure you don't get any twists. 
and that all of your stitches are facing the outside. Okay, so from here you're going to chain up two and then into the base of this stitch we're going to place a double crochet. So you yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, and then pull through two. After here, we're gonna go into the next stitch over, and we're gonna place two double crochets into that one stitch. Placing two stitches into one stitch is also called an increase, and you'll need to know that later. <laughs> For the next eight stitches, you're going to place just one double crochet into each stitch. So we're going to do a double crochet into the next eight stitches, and I will check back in with you after that. Okay, so I just finished my last double crochet of the eight stitches. And then into the next six stitches, we're going to increase in every stitch. So we're going to put two double crochets into each of the next six stitches. Here I am placing my last increase into the sixth stitch of this little set and we can see it here now that we have our eight, sing our eight double crochets and then six increasing double crochets. This next step is what they call six double crochets together um, and this is how it would be typed out in a pattern and basically this is like doing a decrease over six stitches So to decrease we're gonna go and we're gonna start our double crochet by yarning over And pushing through that first stitch pull up a loop Okay, and then we're gonna do the first part of a double crochet which is pull through two loops and then we're going to stop leaving two loops on our hook. Now we're going to start our next double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, push through the next stitch, I'm like struggling because of the way that I'm literally straddling and hanging over my camera. You guys hopefully don't have as hard of a time as I'm having here. And you might be wondering, well, why didn't you just edit it out? And I don't know, I guess I just didn't want to ruin the flow here. <laughs> so we're yarning over. We're going to pull up a loop, just like we would start any double crochet. That was a lot. Okay. And then you're going to pull through two loops again, just the first two loops. And now you'll have three loops hanging out there. And then you're going to do that four more times for a total of six decreasing stitches. And I will show you what that looks like at the end because I need to sit down and do this with gravity, not against gravity. <laughs> okay, so I'm pulling through or pulling up my last loop. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull through all the loops on my hook. So we just took six stitches and joined them into one stitch. Now we're basically going to go in reverse of our first step. So for the next six stitches, we are going to put two 
double crochets into each stitch. So literally just the same step we did right before the six together, we're just going in reverse. Okay, so I've just finished my six increasing stitches and you can definitely see the shape of the heart starting to form. So now we're gonna, you guessed it, place eight um, or do eight double crochets. <laughs> One double crochet into the next eight stitches, guys. It's the same as before, we're just going backwards. So for eight stitches after this, I'm gonna go ahead and do a double crochet into each stitch and I will meet you at the end of that. Okay, so this is my last double crochet of that set of eight. And now we're gonna do an increase into the stitch before where we started, just the same way that we increased into the second stitch in the beginning. So I'm gonna place two double crochets into this next stitch of the set. Okay, so remember how we chain two in the beginning? Now we're gonna go into the top of that chain two and just slip stitch it together. To join the end of our heart. To tie off, I'm always gonna chain one cut and then pull the loop all the way through. Okay, so this is our heart and I obviously did mine in purple, which you'll see in a bit, um, but this is what it looks like. And I did go ahead and make a bigger version and I drew out kind of a diagram of these steps so you can always pause and refer um, and I kind of hope it makes sense to you guys, but I will kind of give you the rundown anyway. So on our original heart, we chained 36. For the bigger heart, I chained 46. And then the bottom two stitches are going to stay always two. That's kind of like our consistent. And then I went around and just divided it up in the steps that we did. So we did eight, six, 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 eight. And then on the other side, the bigger heart, I just added two to each of those steps. So the eight double crochets turn into 10, the six turns into eight, so on and so forth. And I'm assuming if you wanted to make a bigger heart, you could add 10 more chains and then just go around and add two again to that number. And if you want to make a smaller heart, you could just subtract 10 and subtract two. Did that make any sense? I guess we'll never know. Well, I mean, you could let me know. Comment below if that made any sense. Um, but now we're going to go into the main portion of the sweater. So to start off your front panel, you want to make a chain that stretches from your one side of your waist to your other side of your waist. So for me, that was 70 stitches. And then after you make that chain, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and start just doing single crochets all the way across. So um, single crochets do take the longest to work up because they're the smallest stitch, but for this top, I really thought it was the best look and the best way to keep the heart in its shape. So this does take a little bit to work up, but it's worth it. So. Um, we're just going to go back and forth doing single crochets until we get a chunk up until where we want our heart base to start. So for me, I know I want to add ribbing to the bottom that hits right about where my pant line is. And this chunk right here is just enough stitches to where I want the bottom of the heart to be, like right at my boob. So now we're gonna place stitch markers in the middle. And if you have an even number like me, you're gonna have two middles. So I put two stitch markers in, and because I have 70 stitches, it's at 35 on each side. And then you're gonna take your heart 
and place two stitch markers right at the bottom. And there's two because the heart is 46 stitches, so half of that is 23. And I went based off of, there's two very obvious stitches at the top where the heart dips down at that six together portion. Um, and I went and counted from top to bottom on those sides. And I always recommend counting, 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 never fold in half. The fold in half method never works guys and you will always regret it so always count so here we are and what we're gonna do is line them up I'm gonna pick up where I crocheted last I'm a few stitches away from the heart and I will show you what we do from there okay so I drew this out more of a reference point so as we continue on you can always come back to this um, and I tried my best to type out the steps that I'm going to explain but it's it <sighs> reading it is confusing until you watch me explain it to you and then when you read it you're, you're going to think it's helpful I promise so that's why this is here for you to refer to it um, but let's go ahead and get into the explaining Okay, so I'm a few stitches away from my stitch marker. And basically for this first row off of your chunk, all we're doing is slip stitching from the stitch marker stitch into the heart. So you can see I'm just doing single crochets up until the stitch marker. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker Oh, by the way, guys, you don't have to buy these stitch markers. You could literally use a bobby pin. Um, I do like these, though. I recommend them. So now we're just going to poke our little hook through the stitch. And then make sure you have your pretty side of your heart facing the front. And you want to slip stitch through the pretty side to the back. And we're just gonna yarn over and pull it through both loops like that now for this whole heart process your slip stitch will count as your turning stitch so don't chain one before you turn after you slip stitch just turn your work and now I'm just gonna single crochet all the way to the end of the row and you want to start right at the stitch after your slip stitch as close to the heart as there's a stitch and I'm just going to do a single crochet all the way across chain one turn my work and I will meet you guys back here right before the next step okay so we're approaching the heart again and for this next step we're going to decrease before slip stitching into the heart so when you are two stitches away from the heart, you're gonna start your decrease. So to decrease, all we're gonna do is push our hook through that second to last stitch, start a single crochet by pulling up a loop, but don't pull through. Instead, start another single crochet into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then you're gonna pull through all three loops on your hook. And that is a decrease. So we've taken two stitches and turned them into one stitch. And now on the next stitch up on your heart, you're just gonna push from front to back your hook through the heart. Pull through the yarn through the heart and then through your loop pull it nice and tight and turn your work and once again you're not going to chain up before you turn your work and then you want to start your row again the closest stitch to the heart i know sometimes when you decrease you skip a stitch and we will be doing that later at the neckline but for the heart i found that it's best if you just stick with the stitch right next to the heart and you're going to repeat this step exactly for eight rows total. So 
So just to show you really quick, the reason we're decreasing is because we want to create that outward shape of kind of the V that's at the bottom of a heart. And because we're working with negative space, we have to force what's going around it to create that shape and just connect our cutout to the V that we're making at the bottom here. And you're going to find times where things start looking a little wonky. But again, like I said in the beginning, you have to trust the process. Um, because things are going to want to move the way they move. So once you've done eight decreasing rows, now what we're going to do into that ninth row is just slip stitch. So we're going to single crochet all the way up to the heart and only do a slip stitch into the heart. Once again, the slip stitch counts as your turning stitch, so we're just gonna turn our work. Single crochet, um, starting with the first stitch closest to the heart, all the way down the line, chain one, turn back. And I did that in a millisecond. <laughs> um, we love editing. So we are back here, and the next few steps are where they start to get a little confusing. Um, but again, bear with me. So for this next row, we're gonna increase into the stitch right before the heart. So this stitch right here, we're gonna place two single crochets into that stitch. Because now we're trying to teach the heart to start curving back inwards. And then as per use, we are going to slip stitch into the next loop up in the heart, pull tight, flip our work, and then do the old down and back. Okay, so this next step is what we're going to do for the next three rows. So we are going to increase in the last stitch like last time. That stays the same, so we're gonna put two stitches into the last stitch before the heart. But this time, we're gonna slip stitch into two of the loops of the heart. So we're gonna slip stitch like normal into the next preceding stitch of the heart. Pull through nice and tight. And then we're gonna go ahead and go up one more stitch and just slip stitch again. And this also counts as your turning chain. So this is the method that took me quite a few tries to figure out because I never would have thought of doing it this way. I don't know, maybe I'm not smart. But this definitely helps preserve the shape um, and it, it just prevents your work from getting really wonky. It keeps things nice and flat. So you're still going to turn and single crochet into the first true stitch next to the heart and just go all the way down and all the way back. And so we're going to do the increase slip stitch twice, a total of three times. After you do it your third time and turn your work and go all the way down the row, you're going to end on the seam side. So you're not going to turn and go back towards the heart on this row. You're just going to go all the way to the end and then chain one and then cut and pull and pull it nice and tight. If your piece looks like this, you're doing it right. Um, my fingers are pointing in that direction because I'm trying to tell you that because we want everything facing the same side, this time we actually need to start with our slip stitch in the center of the heart because before we were going right to left, so now we still want to go right to left. Um, I know people do these in different ways. I'm not even confident that I 
slip into things the right way every time, but it works for me. So I just go ahead, be careful to make sure you're actually doing the stitch that your stitch marker was in and not the old stitch because the right side stitch will sometimes stretch and confuse you because it looks like an open stitch, but it's not. Um, and so you're just gonna push through and then pull up your loop. You always want to crochet over your tail to make sure things are nice and secure. And then basically you're just going to do the same exact steps on the left side that you did on the right side. So feel free to rewind and take a look at the diagrams and click where you need to click. Um, but you're going to do the same exact thing on the left side that we did on the right side. The only difference is going to be at the end, we're not going to cut off, but instead we're going to turn our work and head back across and do one final step. And I will show you what that is. So you can see here, I did my whole side. This is what it should look like, guys. It's gonna fold a little bit. It's okay. We're okay. My hook is on that side. I did not tie off. So now we are going to turn our work and head right across the top of everything. Here, we're gonna decrease before and after the heart for our last row of our cutout part. So our last two stitches before the heart, we're gonna do a decrease. Just a reminder, to decrease, you pull up a loop as if you're starting your single crochet, but don't finish it. And then push through the second stitch, pull up a loop, and then pull through all three. And then we're just gonna single crochet into each loop all the way across the heart. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I'm going real slow-mo here. So I'm gonna skip ahead, but feel free to pause, crochet across, and we'll meet each other on the other side. So hello from the other side, Adele. Right after we finish our heart, we're gonna decrease into our left side. So we're gonna push through start our single crochet and this is going into the first light purple stitch after the heart and then go into the next light purple stitch pull up a loop and pull through all three and this is going to give us that nice little tug that the corners of the heart need back out and then just finish your row of single crochets and guys this was by far the hardest part of the whole project so we are going to zoom through the rest of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain it, but this was the hardest part. So feel free to just refresh yourself on this part as much as you need and ask any questions if you have any questions. Okay, so this is what our front panel is looking like. And from here, we're just gonna go back and forth across the top until it reaches where we want our neckline to be. At this point though, Please take the time to count your stitches across the top because it should be the exact same number as the bottom. And if it's not, now is the time to fix it before we go any further. So I have 70 stitches all the way across the top, the same amount as I had all the way across the bottom. So now I'm gonna keep going back and forth just like we did in the beginning until it reaches where I want the bottom of my neckline to be. So here I am many rows later, I think I did 14, and this is about where I wanted this top's neckline to sit. Um, our cutout is looking cute, and you can see it naturally flattens as you add more rows at the top, but it still keeps its shape. It's still a heart, it's still cute. So from here, we are going to take our stitch markers again and start working on our neckline. So we're gonna take our two stitch markers. If you had an odd number of stitches, you'll only need one stitch marker because you'll have a true middle. Um, but again, I had 70, nice and even. So mine are in the middle at 35 and 35. 
And now I'm going to space them evenly to kind of the width that I want my U-shaped collar line to be. If you want a V, then you would just decrease from these middle stitches, but I wanted more of a rounded neck. So I think I went over like six stitches on each side and the stitches are gonna be completely up to you and your neck and whatever, hold it up to yourself, see how it looks, um, but just make sure they're even. So to start making the U, you're just gonna decrease into the stitch marker. So again, decreasing, pull up a loop, don't finish girl. And then pull up your next stitch and then pull through all three. I don't know why I did it with the stitch marker in, but whatever. For the neckline, however, we are going to chain one. We're gonna turn our work and this time we're gonna skip that first stitch that we just decreased on and instead go into the second stitch next to that turning chain and that's where we're gonna put our first single crochet of the row I'm gonna go down turn around come back and I'm gonna repeat this step until I want the like you of the neckline to stop your desired shoulder width whatever that may be so for me, it was three decreasing rows. For you, maybe four. For you, it might be two. See? This is what I'm talking about. So that's about where I wanted it to stop. If I kept decreasing, my top would probably like kind of hang off my shoulder. Um, and then from here, I'm just gonna go back and forth, adding more rows of single crochet till it reaches the very top of my shoulder, plus one row for seam allowance. So that looks like this. I believe I added four rows after my three decreasing rows. And that's gonna reach right at the top of my shoulder and a little bit over for where I'm gonna seam to the back panel. Then I'm gonna repeat the same exact steps on the other side, but same as the left side of the heart, I wanna start at the stitch marker so that everything is facing the same direction and we're always going right to left or left to right, whichever your prettier side is, but you wanna make sure you're still going the same direction. So starting your row with a decrease can be kind of tricky sometimes. So when you're done with your decreasing rows, just take the time to count your stitches and make sure it's the same amount of stitches as the other side before continuing on. And when you cut your yarn, they should both be facing the same direction like this and that's your whole front panel throw that girl to the side and do your back panel the back panel is way easier it's just going to be back and forth rows of the same amount of stitches as the front so i had a big chunk of 70 stitches all the way up until it matched the neckline or you could do it a little higher in the back it's up to you but then I follow the same exact steps for the neckline. So I didn't take the time to show you that. I did it all off camera, like at night when it was too dark to record. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just go back and forth with a big chunk of make your crochet fabric. Oh my gosh, English. And then repeat the same exact steps for the neckline. Nothing new there. Then we want to put our pretty sides together. So at this point, you'll have a pretty side and an ugly side. And you wanna put your pretty panels facing each other, match up at the shoulders, and we're gonna slip stitch across the top to join our shoulders. Some people join by doing a single crochet. I personally think it's a little bulky to do that, um, I just make sure my slip stitches are nice and tight and even. And this is why counting is so important because your slip stitches will be so much prettier if you have the same exact amount of stitches on both sides, on both panels. Okay, so now we're doing a cheeky little try on and you wanna put it on kind of like a smock and pin where you want your arm sleeves to be. And I like to do it relaxed. I like to pick up my arm. I like to wave them around sometimes. 
um, because what we're doing next is making the sleeves. So you want to pinch it somewhere comfortable and mark it with a stitch marker. Okay, so I only do it on one side and then I count the rows and there are so many different ways to count rows. I count by little nubs um, and you want to count the rows and then just mirror your stitch marker on the other side. So you have two even sleeve holes. Now I'm going to inside out it and seam up on the sides from the bottom all the way to the stitch marker. Just slip stitching all the way through like I did on the shoulders. Okay, here we are. So at this point, it's looking kind of like a t-shirt. Cute. You could keep it like this if you want. I wanted this to be long sleeve. Now that I'm looking at it though, um, should I make a short sleeve one for the spring? I don't know. I might. Um, again, make sure your arms are comfortable. Everything's looking fun, flirty, cute, and we're going to go ahead and start our sleeves. So I kind of cheat with my sleeves. I do them the wrong way. So you're going to hook in at the armpit. You could hook in anywhere. I prefer the armpit because I want knots to be somewhere hidden. And then you're going to go ahead and just single crochet all around the armhole. So the more single crochets you do around the armhole, the bigger, like the wider your sleeve will be. And the less you do, the tighter your sleeve will be. It's completely up to you how many stitches you decide to make. Um, I went with 40 because I wanted a, a slimmer sleeve. The important thing is to just count and write it down somewhere so you can make sure that you have the same amount on both sides. Okay, so I went around and I did 40 stitches and this is where the cheating comes in. So traditionally, um, when working in the round, you would go and slip stitch, chain one, and turn your work. So I don't do that. <laughs> I would rather have a slightly uneven sleeve than a seam in the back um, to each their own. If you wanna do it the proper way, Google crocheting in the round. Um, if you want to do it my way, <laughs> the seamless way, literally what we're going to do is slip stitch just the once at the bottom to complete the round and then just keep single crocheting around and around and around and around. Um, it's easier, it's faster, it's seamless. I personally don't even notice the unevenness of it. I guess if you were to change um, colors, you might. But if you're doing all one color, I think this is a fine way to do it. So I cheat a little bit. Cheaters do prosper. So I'm just going to go around and around and around and show you when I'm halfway. I'm halfway. <laughs> um, so this is me like exactly halfway done, I believe. And there's no seam because I'm just going around in circles. But I thought I would stop here and show you how to do the ribbing on the neckline because this is the same detailing I'm gonna do at the end of the sleeve, both sleeves, and the bottom of the top. Because essentially, this is the last thing that I actually need to teach, um, and then I'll just kind of throw it all together and show you what we're working with. So I like to do the ribbing with the like highlight color or the different color. You could definitely do it with the same color as the majority, that's just personal personal preference. Um, I recommend starting in the back because this will have a seam um, and it's nice to be in the back. So all you're going to do is make a slip knot and you're going to hook in at the center back and do one row of single crochet around. This is similar to how we started the sleeve. So I'm just going to single crochet all the way around and I will meet you afterwards. Okay, so now I'm going to go and slip stitch into that first stitch where I hooked in to pull everything together. And from here, we're going to start our ribbing. So you're going to chain up however many chains gives you the length of your desired detailing. So I wanted mine to sit up like an inch 
And for me, that desired length is seven chains. So I'm gonna go ahead and chain up seven. And then you're gonna chain one for your turning chain. Ribbing's really simple. From here, we're just gonna go and slip stitch into the back loop only of each stitch in the chain. So you're just gonna insert in the back loop, pull through all the way. And we're gonna do that all the way down the chain until we hit the base. My biggest tip for ribbing is just to count because sometimes your very top stitch or your very bottom stitch get hidden behind other rows of ribbing. So every once in a while, just stop and count your slip stitches. You should have however many you started with, which for me again is seven. Now you're just gonna slip stitch into the next single crochet on your base to join. And in this case, just like with the heart, this is gonna count as our turning chain so no need to chain one, just pull tight, turn your work, and continue with your back loop only slip stitches. And that's literally all you have to do to create a really nice ribbing with crochet. Make sure you chain up one when you get to the top end, and again, you don't chain one at the bottom end. And then you just do this all the way around into each single crochet that you made on the base. And then I'll show you how to connect the sides. How pretty. Detailing is literally like, I don't know, to me it just takes something from zero to a hundred. Love it. Okay. So I like to just give myself a chunk of yarn and cut because every time I inside out, I just make a mess with the yarn and this makes it a lot neater and easier. So just give yourself enough yarn to be able to slip stitch to join the sides. We're gonna be working from the ugly side of our project, so inside out. And then we're just going to insert our hook again into that loop that we left. And we're just going to slip stitch all the way up the same way we've joined the shoulders and the same way we joined the sides of the panels. When we get to the bottom, um, I just chain one and pull through the loop. That's how I always make a knot. Okay, and that is how we add the detailing to the top. And again, this is the same exact step that I do at the end of the sleeves and the bottom. Just do a base chain around of single crochets and follow the same exact steps for ribbing. So I'm going to just finish off this top off camera and then I'm going to show you what it looks like. But I have taught you everything that I could possibly teach, I think. But if not, Feel free to ask me below because I will answer any and all questions. How beautiful, how cute. It looks even better on, um, which I'll show you, even though I already showed you, I'll show you some more. We did the little ribbing on the ends of the sleeves and it looks beautiful. I did ribbing on the bottom and I did add a, a single crochet. Um, just around the inside of the heart, literally nothing besides that, just a single crochet, to give it a little more sturdiness as it has been rugged and tugged this whole time. And then I think I might even take my remaining yarn and just with a darning needle, uh, over loop the stitches on the left side to make it more uniform in color, but you don't even have to do that, I'm just picky. But I am so happy with how it came out. Please, if you make it, tag me on Instagram. I would love to see other versions. 
if you want to see me make more things and teach you how to make more things subscribe put your tatas on display this valentine's day um and i'll see you next time bye